One guy who you were linked to for a large part of your career is also in ECW at the time. Actually, uh, played both a uh, you know a, a heel and a baby face, and that's uh, the Superfly Jimmy Snuka. What were your memories of getting back in with him around ECW? Did you guys uh, recreate some of that old magic? I don't. I don't believe so. I don't know. You can check the records. I don't know if we uh, we did much together. We might have done a tag. I wasn't there really that long. I was living in Hawaii. Coming in, you know, for I came in to drop the belt to somebody or something for. I came in to get the pass the belt to Tito. You know, but if I can't just with Jimmy Snooker, you guys, like I said, are so tied to one another. Did you find it easy to go after a guy like Snooker with some of the things you said in your promos? Like, was it something that was so, like, did you guys have a good relationship? Where you could kind of go that little extra limit and kind of jab him a little bit just to get him more, get him more riled up because there's the infamous uh, him throwing the chairs, Morocco, Morocco, you know. And uh, was that something you guys uh, kind of had a good rapport with? Probably. We broke in about the same time. I was uh, I was back here wrestling in Hawaii. I tried wrestled in Vancouver and and Portland at the same time. And then L.A. for a couple of months. And then I came back and I was here in Hawaii. I hadn't been in the business more, maybe a year, maybe not quite. And uh, Frankie Lane was breaking in, uh, breaking Jimmy in. So we, you know, started the book. And that's where, where we, you know, became familiar with one another. And then Portland and Minnesota and, you know, on down the road, yeah. So probably, yeah, it was easier. And, you know, we communicated. Polynesians, you know, we worked for each other and wanted to see each other, you know, both both get over. Now, so, yeah, obviously, I, you know, I'm, go ahead. No, I was going to say, obviously, you know, Jimmy Snook has been in the news a little bit, not for, you know, uh, uh, some of the, the finer things, uh, you know, in his career. Unfortunately, uh, you know, he published a book and said things in the book that kind of caught the eye, you know, of uh, people with the – you know, with the old uh, court case that had always been kind of out there. But was that ever something that, you know, and I don't mean to damper it a little bit, was that something that, you know, was known about at the time, or was that kind of just everybody had their own business going in their own directions? I don't know. I was uh, I was right there around it the whole time. It was, it was the week after we just shot the thing where he threw all my clothes off and I hit him with the microphone and stuff, so I was, I had uh, the same night. It was a big lot of coincidence. Eddie Gilbert, remember Eddie Gilbert? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, the young one, the uh, Tommy Gilbert's son. Mm-hmm. He had, had, had he had uh, run his uh, brand new uh, Lincoln Town Car up the back end of a semi truck and got drugged down the freeway. He called me in the middle of the night, and that's how I ended up you know, crossing over with all the state troopers and everything else and and how I got involved. But, you know, that's, uh, yeah, it was it was quite a, yeah, I could, I could see my whole future going down the drain there for a while. 